All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. I am Kevin Aki here with Matt Cooper, and we are going to take a look at the Haunted Mines as we have another game of Heroes of the Storm to play for you. We'll take a look at the blue team here. We have Demon Hunter, Witch Doctor, Kerrigan, Tassadar, and bringing up the rear, of course, is Stitches. Now, on the red team side, we have, left to right, we have Tyrant, we have ETC, we have Rainer. Oh, thank you very much, Tyrant, for that. Gazlo and Uther with what I honestly think, and no one agrees with me here, that's my favorite skin of the game, Lumberjack Uther. Genuinely <laughs> is. Makes me laugh every time. How are you doing today, Matt? Oh, I'm doing great. It's awesome to be here. Yeah, we're going to take a little bit different look at things today, of course. Uh, it's not just going to be me and Dustin yelling our heads off. It is going to be me doing a little bit of that with Matt actually giving us some good design insights. And we're going to specifically be focusing in on Stitch's talents. So let's actually begin with that. Stitch's big old character has a big old hook. What can you tell us about his level one choices? Yeah, so he's got a couple different choices. He's got Regeneration Master, which is going to increase his health regen every time he, he gathers a regen globe. So you can kind of stack that up as the game progresses. He's got Path of the Warrior, which is going to give him some permanent health every time he levels. Oh, he missed his there. <laughs> uh, there's a talent for that later. <laughs> uh, so he's got Path of the Warrior. Um, but it looks like Stitch has picked up, uh, I think he picked up the wider slam. Yeah, yeah so that'll, that'll increase the size of the slam. There's another talent to increase it further later, and you can even make your slam do stuns later. All right, well, he's already focusing into that, and of course gives him the ability to clear out these waves pretty quickly. Takes a little bit of damage there from ETC as he jumps in. Red Team was collapsing here as Rainer is pushing very aggressively in the bot lane. ETC pays for it, though. Not even that much damage done to the blue team. Uh, and a nice pull there. So it looks like Tyrande is going to pay for this with her life. Yeah, goes down right at the last second there. And that's a two-kill advantage for our blue team, now up two to one. Now, of course, talents are going to hit every few levels, specifically one, four, seven, ten. 13, 16, and 20. We'll make sure to check in every time we get to one of those levels so we can talk about what abilities are available for our teammates. Oh, another very great grab there. ETC gets pulled right back into the mix, takes a little bit of damage as he tries to fly away. Now, of course, we are on Haunted Mines. This is a two-lane map in which, after a period of time, teams can actually get access into these mines, as you see our observer Tim Frazier taking a look at it there. Once you jump into these mines, there are a bunch of minions down there that you can kill. Every time you kill one of those minions, you pick up a skull. There are a hundred skulls to gather down at the bottom of the mines. When all hundred are gathered, a, uh, uh, a grave golem actually spawns for both teams, proportional to the amount of skulls that your team gathered. So the more skulls you get, the stronger your golem is. Uther taking some great damage, but of course, he's Uther. He doesn't care. He just walks away, <laughs> heals himself up a little bit more. Damage reapplied back to Stitches, ETC trying to re-engage. Nice shield comes in, though, and that's uh, good help from Tyrande, and is going to save Ku's life. Let's take a look here at the bottom lane. We haven't paid much attention here. Pretty much was Rainer pushing against the Witch Doctor all day long. We're getting very close to level 4, and there it is. Level 4 has hit. Let's talk about the talents that Stitches can use now. So he's got Amplified Healing, which is going to increase his health regeneration. It's going to increase the healing he gets from using his Devour, and of course, any heals he gets. Now, Stitches doesn't have a healer on his team this game. He's got Tassadar, he's going to shield him, but that's not going to affect Amplified Healing. He's got Superiority, which reduces the damage he takes from, from minions, um, which makes him, you know, it's better for jungling, it's better for going into the... The, uh, the mines, and then he can upgrade his passive, his trait here, um, to make it larger radius, do more damage, and all around just better. And it looks like that's what he's done. Now, this is two traits in a row that we've actually seen Stitches go for something that increases his AoEs, does a little bit more damage, zones out fights a little bit more effectively. Oh, Tehran throwing a shot there and uh, misses everyone, wasn't able to gather vision on anyone. Um, so let's see here. So Stitches is actually building himself into quite a presence in team fights. Oh, Kerrigan jumps right on top of Raynor, no sexual tension there, and uh, Kerrigan manages to snag Raynor's kill. Uh, very nice job, ETC actually now behind both the Witch Doctor and Kerrigan. It's going to be very difficult for him to run away. No, oh, there he goes. He dives right past and sneaks his way back like behind Uther, the turret. he runs away. That's right. <laughs> Quite literally, sometimes jumps as well. Um, all right, so teams are starting to jump into the mines. Now, you constantly have a tug of war on this map. How much do you want to commit to the mines underneath to get yourself that big, scary golem? How many people do you want to keep up top to keep pushing objectives? Right now, blue team is outmanned two to three in the mines. There are actually 
actually two more members of their team down there. They're just not re-engaging on this fight. They're continuing to push and get skulls. Now, that is a particular strategy you can use. Of course, sometimes it leaves your teammates out to dry. Sometimes a team can jump right back up and start pushing objectives globally. And we've hit level 7 now, which means we have another round of talents available for Stitches. Right, so we have Block, which is going to periodically, periodically reduce some damage he takes from auto attacks. We have Relentless, which is going to lessen the CC reduction. And this is actually a little bit of a bug on our part. It's supposed to be a level 13 talent. Stitches has this a little earlier on, and it looks like that's the choice he's going to make. <laughs> Seems good to me. Go yeah, I mean, talent. pretty, pretty good talent right now at level 13, yeah. Uh, but he could have also picked up uh, Tenderizer, which makes his auto attacks slow enemies, so he can really stick to... Uh, to them, and then the Devour upgrade to your food adds a hot whenever he uses this, so not only does he get the big impact healing, but he's also going to get some health over time. All right, so uh, we kind of talked about one of these possible strategies before, and Blue Team has decided, well, <laughs> Stitches dies, Stitches dies. We're going to go and we're going to collect skulls. Even if worse comes to worse and Red would get every other skull on the map, this would still be a proportionally stronger golem for the Blue Team, and now it's going to be overpoweringly strong, as it is currently 80 skulls to 9. All right, taking a look back on the map here, we have Witch Doctor and Tassadar pushing in the bot lane. Nice job, though, by Red Team so far to go ahead and start pushing uh, uh, pushing Blue Team back. These golems are going to spawn soon, though, so it's uh, kind of an interesting give and take. Blue Team already has an overwhelming amount of skulls. They have to get back down into the mines and get those last nine skulls if they want to. Otherwise, Red Team can sit up here all day long and just continue to push objectives and delay those Grave Golems from spawning. Yeah, and it seems like that's what the red team is doing. They know they're behind in skulls. It's not really in their best interest to grab that grave golem, unless they have a commanding lead where they can immediately deal with it, which they don't have right now. So it looks like they're going to make blue send one of their players down to get this, this last couple skulls. Yeah, and that certainly has to happen. Of course, that would be an 89 to 11 uh, grave golem there, which would be hugely in blue's favor. They have also captured a few siege minions. Oh, Stitches jumps right out into a fight. Kerrigan's going to be around as well. Uses Ravage, jumps right on top of Rainer. Rainer takes a bit of damage, trying to jump away avoids uh, all of these zombies there from the Witch Doctor. The fight is continuing, and Stitches is actually taking some pretty good damage. One more shot will end him, but no, he turns around, he re-engages like a man! Ult comes out from the Witch Doctor. Witch Doctor zoning back as much of the red team as he can, and Ku embarrassingly dies after taking that risk. He almost fell out of his desk. He was <laughs> so <laughs> close. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, at level 10, Stitches has two heroic choices. He can choose from the Gorge, which allows him to eat an enemy here and walk around with them inside his belly. Or you can get the Putrid Bio, which leaves a trail of goo everywhere he moves that does damage and, and slows, so that's great for a team fight. It looks like Stitches has picked up the Gorge talent, which is going to allow him to basically remove an enemy hero from the team fights. And there's some fun shenanigans you can do with that. You can, you know, pull someone in with your hook, gorge them, walk on the other side of your gate, so there's a lot of really fun stuff you can do with that. Ability. Yeah, you call it fun, I call it, oh god, when that happens to me, I want to throw my monitor out the window. Um, Alright, looks like another member of Blue team unfortunately passing away. Grave Golem has summoned for both teams, and you see just at the top of the screen the difference between those two Grave Golems. One, of course, is going to have a lot of fancy effects because he is way stronger than this tiny little dinky Golem in the bottom right-hand corner we see for Red Team. Now, that's going to give Blue a lot of pushing power, and they can do a couple of different things here. They can either commit and just fully go after the opponent's Grave Golem, leaving theirs to do considerable damage in the top lane. They can escort the Grave Golem here at the top with their entire team and push as many objectives as they can, or they can split their attention and try and do both. Now, that's a little bit harder, but because their Grave Golem is so much stronger, it gives them a good opportunity to be able to accomplish both of these goals at once. You see how quickly that Red Grave Golem is dying right now, even with all those members of Red down there. Starfall hits from Tehran. A lot of damage being applied to the blue team. ETC jumping right back in. He's outside of the range of the fort, so this is a good place for him to stand. Stitches goes down. The Grave Golem is actually still up and pushing, so even with that very weak Grave Golem, Red Team's done a nice job of pushing objectives. However, they haven't even done anything to the Grave Golem sitting at the top for blue. All right, so this fort is about to die here. Rainer pops an ult, of course, did spawn a couple of Banshees rather than his Hyperion. Those Banshees will run alongside him and deal damage to anything they possibly can. Tassadar takes some damage as he tries to back away here. He will get out Claudio, uh, putting his body in front of the red team there for a second just to make sure that his teammate wouldn't die. And looks like we do have level 13 now, so we've got a new round of talents for Stitches. 
Yeah, so he's got Spell Shield, which will reduce some damage he takes from spells. Great against abilities like Snipe that are high damage. He's got Mega Smash, which will drastically increase the radius of his slam ability. And that can, of course, play into the next talent that will um, add stun to that. He's got Indigestion, which will spawn a Retchling every time he uses <laughs> Devour. Um, and it looks like he picked up the Mega Smash, and now he's just going to have this this giant W ability that he can hit, you know, entire creep waves with, but also probably an entire team with. Yeah, I mean, Stitches is just great at zoning, and once he gets those wider AoEs as well, he can really kind of command positioning in a team fight. Whoa, a strong ultimate from the Witch Doctor there with an attempt at a hook there from Stitches. Didn't land, but that uh, Witch Doctor ult, in addition to the Ultra List that Kerrigan spawned as her heroic ability, is uh, plenty enough to end the lives of one member of Blue or of the Red Team. Stitches comes right back in, of course, has that very, very wide smash that we saw before. ETC jumps directly into the middle of everyone. Grab does not land. Red Team is going to be able to make their way away. I will give credit to Red Team, though, despite the fact that they had a golem that was significantly stronger than theirs. They were able to take map objectives and actually retain only a one-level disadvantage. So, well done by them so far. Stitches tries another grab there. Ultimate comes out from Rainer. Of course, he's going to use those Banshees to try and get directly on top of the Demon Hunter. Claudio falls, and the rest of the Red Team now has to make their way away, at least for a second. Rainer, of course, does trigger his automatic healing that he gets for him, starts to back away. More abilities coming in as Starfall hits it's again for Tarant. Oh, Kerrigan comes out of the bushes, uses her Ravage, does a little bit of damage, but immediately gets pummeled by the rest of the red team. Blue team is trying to make their way out of there. Stitch is down to just the last little bit of health, and red has tied up the levels and has started pushing on their own. In the bot lane, we do have some uh, mercenaries, those knights that are pushing for the blue team, and it is going to be enough to kill this fort. But is it enough to really give them the advantage that they're looking for? Red team has done a nice job at coming back. Now we're at level 15. At level 16, we're going to have our last set of, I guess what I like to term, the, the normal uh, talents. Because once we hit level 20, we start to get into the storm powers. So what do you think Stitches is maybe going to be looking at as he moves into level 16 here in a second? Well, he can upgrade the range of his hook, which is a great talent. I love this one. But I think he's actually going to go with the one that adds a stun component to his slam ability. Um, he's already picked up two talents that increase the size of the slam, so it's just gigantic by now. Um, we can see just how big that is when he uses it. Um, and there's a couple other talents he can pick up here that were, you know, they can be they can be decent, but we're gonna see what he picks when he gets it. I'm I'm probably leaning towards the slam. All right, so we'll see if that's indeed what he goes with here as Red Team tries to re-engage directly on top of Stitches and the Witch Doctor. ETC jumps in from afar, stuns both the Witch Doctor and Stitches. Witch Doctor dies, Stitches down to his last little bit of health, and of course, he does gorge on his opponent, but can't get behind the tower. That would have been sick. He would have taken Uther with him, or, you know, Uther probably would have walked away. Um, but in any case, Blue Team has once again gone with the strategy that they're going to sit back and they're going to play the Grave Golem game. They're allowing Red Team to push up in this bot lane, and that's actually doing significant damage. In fact, once this fort goes down, we're going to start to see catapult minions, and this is going to allow Red Team to start directly sieging their opponent's palace. However, if these mines go completely uncontested, we could see a 100 to 0 Grave Golem pop out. We already know that Blue Team's Grave Golem is quite far along in its path, but they better get back soon because Red Team is pushing. Okay, so level 16 was just hit, and Stitches did gain those new abilities, as we were talking about before, had the choice of one of those talents. Ultimate's coming out for Demon Hunter there, does a significant amount of damage to Uther, but of course Uther heals right back up, continues to take more damage, and walks out of the fight. Red Team takes some damage here as uh, Rainer tries to get into the mix, but unfortunately he's taking shots directly from the palace, and it drains his health very, very quickly. There finally comes out his ultimate. Um, Stitch is doing a nice job of sitting there as the front line and continuing to apply damage, but there are multiple rounds of, of Siege Giants now that are sitting up here and just hurling rocks at this palace, which is actually falling in health down to just 50%. Blue Team needs to be able to push this back. Gazlo comes in from the side with that death ray, and he eliminates a member of Blue Team. Looks like, uh, let's see here, that wasn't actually Kerrigan that fell. And Demon Hunter goes down as well, so even though Red Team is being repelled right now, uh, things are not looking good for Blue. All right, so down in the mines, it's 50 skulls to nothing right now. Of course, Blue Team has completely team abandoned that. And, oh, nice grab there. Stitch just starts walking back after he eats Rainer for a bit. Rainer taking some huge damage. There's a nice heal in from Uther, though, and immediately Rainer is back up to full health, and he walks away. Yeah, Rainer has his, uh, 
one of his passive E abilities, basically, that every time he gets low, he's just going to regenerate a bunch of health. Um, and then, of course, with Uther there as well, <laughs> that's a lot of healing. Mm -hmm. You almost have to kill him twice, really. That's about what it amounted to right there. Now, we did see from our observer view there that there were two rounds of uh, Siege mercenaries that were actually Siege giants that were pushing for blue team in the top lane. So they, as well, have pushed all the way to their opponent's palace. Now, of course, their opponent's isn't as low as theirs is right now, but it gives an opportunity. Oh, very nice grab. Hold on to that thought for just a second as Rainer is taken in. Tehran, though, comes in from the side, applies a little bit of healing, and it looks like, once again, that Rainer is going to be able to back away. However, the skulls are now ticking up. We're up to... 60 now almost for the blue team, and if they can get that 100 to 0 Grave Golem, they've already pushed up to their opponent's palace at well, as well, and it may give them what they need to be able to finish this game outright. Oh, look at that ult from the Witch Doctor actually pins, uh, pins, ooh, what's that actually, the, uh, anyway. Oh, Toronto. thank you very much. Toronto against the side there. Rainer trying to make his way back in. Nice stun from ETC. Really, really nice job of timing exactly where the Witch Doctor was we, be. we saw that Witch Doctor use the uh, Ice Block talent there, which makes him invulnerable for a couple seconds. But in that kind of situation where you got three heroes on top of you, you're really just postponing the inevitable for a couple seconds. Yeah, that's basically what happens, and the inevitable is actually happening down here in the mines as well. As soon as this Grave Golem dies, 20 more skulls are going to spawn. That's going to be 100, but Red Team is already pushing on this palace right now. ETC taking a little bit of damage. Gaslow was eaten. He has pushed away for just a bit, but those blue team members need a Hearthstone back right now. Palace is down to 50% and falling. Looks like red team just going straight for it. Uther now gets into the mix, heals up his teammates just a little bit. Palace falling to under 15%, 10%, 5%, and there it falls. And that is going to be GG. Red team takes the victory. Those that 100 skull red grave team. golem was summoning, but it wasn't there yet. Yeah, and that looked like definitely an all-in kind of play style. They knew that that 100 skull golem was going to be a big problem, but they just focused on the core. They didn't even care that some of their guys were dying, taking a lot of damage, and if they didn't kill that, I, I think we might have seen a comeback there, but yeah. um, they were able to finish and seal the deal. All right, guys. Well, that is going to be it for our Shoutcast. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I'm Kevin Naki here with Matt Cooper and Tim Frazier, and we are signing off for Blizzard Entertainment. Have a great day.